Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna see how to use the bus servers in this robotic arm and also know the fundamental principle behind it. So, uh, so coming into the hardware, so I'm using six bus servers which are connected in cascaded form and uh, I have a bus servo driver which is connected to the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Uh, and the communication between uh, the command uh, is sent to the ser bus server driver to I2C communication or we say I2C communication. So what are bus servers? Before we go into understanding the bus servers, let's understand how the ordinary servers work. So the, uh, so the ordinary servers work uh, with the PWM signal. Uh, so I have MG995 and SG90. These two are controlled via PWM signal, while the bus servers uh, are controlled by writing the data over the serial port. So the bus servers has three lines, while the ordinary or the standard, uh, the serial uh, has uh, four pins. So that is why we use uh, the server board here. So basically the server board doesn't actually only supply the power but also convert the serial data into half duplex uh, serial port data uh, so to understand what is half half uh, duplex uh, and full duplex i will be mentioning uh, the link to the explanation on my blog in this description below uh, now we understood why we need the bus server driver so the next thing is we will understand what is inside the the bus servo so in bus servo, we have a small DC motor, metal gears, and a potentiometer, and a circuit board, a control circuit board. So what does the circuit board do? So when we send uh, the command, the serial command, uh, the, this, the main circuit board actually converts that into a PWM signal to control the motor. Yeah, and the potentiometer. Potentiometer act as a position feedback uh, to the host machine. So now we understood uh, about the hardware. So let's get into the software and see how we can set the IDs of each servers and uh, how we can control them. Yeah. So now I'm sharing you the screen of NVIDIA Jetson Nano. The first thing we need to do is scan the I2C bus to check which devices are connected on this bus. To do that, we need to open the terminal. So let's open the terminal. So uh, first thing is uh, we need to pass the I2C detect command to find the devices connected on the I2C bus. So this command is a part of I2C tools package, which provides various tools for interfacing with the devices connected on the I2C bus. So let's type in I2C detect command. So uh, this is a specific command which has to be passed. Uh, in our case, to get the address of the device, we need to uh, use some more commands with the I2C detect. For example, so in this case, we have to type in hyphen y so this option disables the interactive mode normally i2c detect will ask for more confirmations before scanning each bus using this hyphen y uh, skips these prompts and making the command non-interactive and faster so the next command we have to add in is uh, r so this is the option which access actually forces it to use only the read operations uh, which can be uh, safer in for some devices so and the next thing is we have to mention the i2c bus number on many systems the bus one corresponds to the primary i2c bus so in my case also i will be using one so let's type in one yeah so in summary, the I2C detect hyphen Y hyphen R and one scans the I2C bus number one for devices using the read operation only and without asking for user confirmation. So all the dashes indicates no devices except one, which is 15. Two digit hexadecimal number indicates that a device was found at that address, which can be represented as 0x15. This address is essential for configuring and communicating with the device. So now let me open Jupyter Notebook. 
So we already got to know the address of the servo which is connected on uh, the Jetson Nano I2C bus. And let me open uh, the Jupyter notebook for this video. So this is a this is the notebook which uh, I created for this video uh, with a lot of references from the, the servo manufacturer uh, and uh, Jetson Nano data sheets and a lot of blocks. So the program is already written uh, so that uh, we don't uh, write the program together and uh, spend time on it. So SMBus is the first uh, library we need to import for this uh, function. So SMBus library is uh, the library which actually helps us uh, to communicate with the devices over the I2C bus. This is also the part of uh, I2C uh, tool package. So the next line of code is uh, uh, the smbus.smbus uh, uh, in brackets 1. What does this mean? Usually in the object oriented programming, we need to initialize the class uh, from a library. So that is what we are doing here. So uh, in, in the previous step, as you can see, uh, we used uh, I2C detect Y uh, and R and 1. So I2C detect is also from the I2C tool package. And uh, here you can see 1. Why did we mention 1? 1 is nothing but uh, a, the I2C bus number. Uh, usually the the primary i2c bus number is one uh, so which my uh, device is connected so we are scanning the i2c bus one over here so going back to the code so in the next line uh, we are creating the id number which has to be set to the servo motor with a variable id so before we start with the code so what we need to do is we need to make sure that only one servo is connected to the bus yeah so you, we know that the bus servers are always connected and cascaded. You can see over here that uh, we have the first uh, uh, bus servo connected uh, from here and then we have the another side of it going to uh, the second motor. You can see over here the second motor and from the second motor it's going to the third motor and uh, if you can see over here and then from the third motor it's going to the fourth motor so so basically uh, these motors are connected and cascaded so when we are setting the id uh, to a particular servo we want the other servos to be disconnected from the bus so basically now i want to set the id of the the first servo so i will remove the the second servo connection so only one servo is connected to the i2c bus through the servo driver so let's get back to the code so here you can see the write byte data uh, which is a method in the smbus uh, uh, class and specifically in in python the smbus library uh, uh, yeah is often used in raspberry pi or nvidia jetson or the other platforms uh, which includes this method uh, which is a write byte data and this method is used to write a single byte of data to a specific register um, in the i2c device so in our case uh, uh, you can see that um, uh, the write byte data uh, which has uh, three parameters you need to pass uh, to that method that is uh, first method first uh, parameter would be uh, the i2c device address and the second thing would be the register to which we are writing and the third would be the data so in the above line uh, 0x15 is the i2c device address which we saw in the i2c detector usually the device has uh, multiple uh, registers uh, each serving different functions uh, for example configuration data storage or the setting so in this case uh, the 0 a, 0 x 18 uh, which is uh, the, uh, the the register which we are we are targeting here uh, actually uh, writes the ID uh, of the server so the last parameter which, which we are passing is uh, the ID so here we are doing the and operation uh, with a zero x ff which is in hexadecimal uh, is nothing but one 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 uh, and uh, so what this does is it it actually masks uh, the id within the range of zero to 255 so below uh, in the comment uh, of this uh, section of the code i have also uh, given an example how uh, this bit uh, operation is working 
so now running the first three lines of code so when I run the third block it sets the um, the ID of the servo uh, to 1 in the similar way you can set the ID of different servos but make sure you have connected only the respective servos to which you are setting the ID so now uh, after we have set the ID uh, we will control the the first servo uh, so now I am setting the ID to 1 that is which servo I want to control and then I have created a variable angle and time so where I give the command input uh, what angle uh, my servo has to go ha or has to position himself in what time. So the first line of formula which you can see position scaling is nothing but um, it's a formula wherein I'm mapping the angle to the position value uh, output which I am getting from the encoder of the servo so the servo the bus servo which I am using has the a potentiometer as uh, the uh, the the encoder I can say where uh, the value it is output uh, is in the range of 96 to 4000 that is 0 to 360 degree yeah so now I have to map this uh, values that is 96 to 4000 which is 0 to 360 to 0 to 180 degree uh, which is equal to 900 to 300 and 3100 position range of the encoder as you can see below we are using the method uh, bus dot write i2c block data write i2c block data which needs uh, a, which is a method actually and which needs three parameter as an input the first is the address of the device which we know that is 0x15 and the second is the address of the id of the servo in our implementation the id of each servo corresponds directly to its register address so here we are using a base address which is 0x10 to which we add the id of the servo so this information is usually given by the manufacturer as explained in the comment so the third parameter which we have to pass through the right i2c block data is the list of commands the bus servo needs a list of values passed because it requires multiple piece of data to perform a specific operation so what does this mean this means that when you're controlling a servo it needs two main information that is the position and the timing information which has to be communicated to servo in one single i2c transaction to ensure that they are processed correctly and simultaneously by the servo so now we know that a list has to be passed which should contain two data which is position and timing the position value is calculated based on the angle and the mapped to a range which is 900 to 3100 which cannot be expressed in 8 bits this value needs to be communicated as two separate bytes because it is larger than what can be represented in a single byte which can only hold a values from 0 to 55 this is the reason we are splitting the position value which is in the range of 900 to 3100 into two bytes we are doing the same for the time data we are splitting the value into two bytes that is why we are passing four bytes of data in one single list of one single i2c transaction please once go through the the comments which i have mentioned in this section which clearly explains so when i run this code with a zero degree you can see the robot moves to the zero degree position so you can also see that the 900 is uh, the potentiometer value uh, that is we treat that as the encoder value and 3 and 132 is the bit which is the position which, which, which is uh, splitted with the high bit and the low bit so now when I enter 180 degrees and run the code you can see the robot moves to the position 180 
so in this we learned how to control a single motor uh, which are coupled in cascaded form so similar way you can control multiple servos with different IDs which are uh, cascaded together and uh, that's all for this video um, thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye